Back in the 60s, with the success of the Fantastic Four comics behind him, Stan Lee was trying to develop new ideas for a superhero. He was searching for ideas when he noticed a fly on the wall. I was watching a fly walking on a wall, and I said, gee, wouldn't it be cool if I had a hero who could stick to walls like an insect? Knowing he was getting somewhere with this idea, he started coming up with different names. What did I call him? Insect Man? That didn't sound dramatic. Mosquito Man? Nah. <laughs> All the names he went through just didn't feel right. Until he got to Spider-Man. I went down the list. When I got to Spider-Man, Spider-Man, oh that sounded dramatic. So I figured I'd call him that and then we had him shoot webs. And that was great. But Stan Lee didn't stop here. He wanted to make Spider-Man different from your typical superhero. He wanted to create someone that everyone could relate to. Um, and again, I tried to keep it realistic. In order not to make him a typical hero, I made him an average guy who was kind of unpopular. He was sort of a nerd. Uh, the kids didn't like him. They thought he was a bookworm. Now, poor Spider-Man. I mean, okay, he's pretty good at catching bad guys, but he's apt to get an allergy attack while he's fighting. He <laughs> worries about dandruff. He'll have an ingrown toenail, tears his costume. His Aunt May won't let him go out to save the world because he's not wearing his galoshes and it's snowing out. With this idea, Stan Lee went to pitch the idea to the Marvel editor, Martin Goodman, but he rejected it. Oh, this time Martin wouldn't go along with me. Goodman was not too pleased about the idea of a teen superhero. He especially thought the spider idea, alongside his personal problems, wouldn't work. Also, as Spider-Man was a teenager, Martin said teenagers could only be sidekicks. He said, Stan, I'm surprised at you. Don't you realize people hate spiders? You can't call a hero Spider-Man. And a hero can't be a teenager. A teenager can only be a sidekick. And you say you want him to have problems? Don't you know what a superhero is? Stan Lee couldn't do anything, so he didn't push the idea any further. Stan Lee really liked the idea though, so he kept it in the back of his mind until around a year later. They were releasing a book and Stan Lee decided to feature Spider-Man at the back of the book. But some, I don't remember, it was months later, a year later, we had a book we were gonna kill. When you drop a book, nobody cares what you put in the last issue because you, you're killing it. So just to get it out of my system, I put Spider-Man and I featured him on the cover. The comic book went on sale, and when the sales report came in, Goodman realized Spider-Man was an instant success. The book went on sale, and later when the sales figures came in, Martin came running into my office and said, Stan, do you remember that character of yours, Spider-Man, that we both liked so much? Why don't you do a series of them? And I will never forget that. The solo Spider-Man comic book, The Amazing Spider-Man, was released in March 1963. The relatable character immediately became essential to the burgeoning Marvel Universe. It soon eventually became Marvel's top-selling series.